The Apple Pencil is the one accessory I think pretty much everyone can get a use out of on the iPad, even more so than an external keyboard. I've been using one since 2018, and over that time, and with some big updates from Apple II, I've gathered a load of little tips that I use on a daily basis, and I wanted to share those with you today. So if you do like iPad content, be sure to subscribe. I've got loads of that here on the channel, and let's get right into it. First up, let's talk about one that's actually the newest to me. It's a three finger swipe while using the pencil to either undo or redo. It's a really simple but useful tip. When you're using the pencil within a notes based app, a quick three finger swipe to the left will undo your last pencil stroke and a swipe the other way will redo it. I know most of us, myself included, usually reach for the undo or redo button that's usually lying around at the top of the screen. But if you can remember to use this, it's a much quicker way of doing it. Sticking with notes for this second tip is actionable handwriting. This is a really awesome little feature that's really easy to overlook, but it's well worth getting into. In the notes app, if you write down a day or time, perhaps a hand in day or a meeting time, for instance, the iPad can intelligently recognize this and with a finger press can turn that text into a reminder or calendar app, grabbing the date and time with it. This also works for email addresses and phone numbers too. A simple tap of your finger will reveal a menu with contextual actions. This is such a cool little feature, and as someone who often writes down specific information when I'm taking notes during freelance calls, it's just really useful. Another feature I've been using a huge amount since it was released is shape recognition within Apple Notes. This is great if you like drawing little sketches in your notes or if you just want to tidy up your scribbles. It's really easy to use too. When you're drawing a shape, just hold the pencil to the screen after doing a rough outline and it will pop into a perfect shape. This works for rectangles, triangles, squares, stars, lines, and even arrows, which is really useful. I actually used this to design my kitchen when I moved house, and I really couldn't have done it without it. Shape recognition does vary from app to app, so try it out in your drawing or note taker of choice to see what happens. Actionable handwriting and shape recognition were all part of the biggest scroll update from Apple, and there's loads of features in it that make your handwriting more useful and productive. So I'm going to pick three of my favorites for this single tip because they're all quite quick. So let's just jump straight into those. First up is the instant handwriting to text translation. If you select the pen tool with the A on it within Apple Notes or any other app that has pencil kit enabled, it will instantly convert your handwriting into text. So if you do prefer to handwrite but want it in a text format, you can use this. If you make a mistake, you can actually scratch out a word to delete it too, which is really cool. Or if you have missed the space, you can just draw a line between the text to separate it up as well. Secondly, Scribble allows you to also use your handwriting across the entire iPad, so you're not actually limited to the Notes app. This allows you to handwrite in any space that would normally be a typing box. This is great if you're diving in and out of apps while using the pencil, and you can also get the small bar at the bottom for simple actions like pressing the Enter key. And lastly is one I'm sure most of us are aware about, but it's well worth mentioning anyway. It's converting your already handwritten notes to text after the fact. This is one of the headline features of Scribble, and I still think it's one of the best showcases of how powerful and smart it is. If you've got some handwritten notes you'd like to turn into text, it's as simple as double tapping them, highlighting what you want to convert, and then selecting copy as text. You can then paste this into anything else on the iPad, making your handwriting just as useful as typed out text. Another thing a lot of us take for granted is double tapping the side of the pencil for the eraser tool, but that's not all it can do. If you head into the pencil settings menu, you can change the action to be something else. Granted, there isn't a huge amount of choice here and I would argue that the eraser tool is probably the most useful of the bunch, but you can change it here if you like. On that note, I do wish Apple would let you customize this a little further. I could imagine a triple tap to open a note or swiping along with a finger to scroll up or down menus or tools could be really useful. This next one isn't quite the intended purpose for using the Apple Pencil, but it still does work and I wanted to point it out. You can use the Apple Pencil on your Mac with Sidecar. This allows you to use the pencil with bigger desktop style applications like Photoshop, so you can have a tablet style control combined with the power of a fully loaded application. A fair warning though, this isn't perfect and I don't think it's a good replacement for a dedicated drawing tablet for your Mac. To get it set up, get your iPad connected to your Mac via Sidecar, then open up an application like Photoshop and basically you're golden. You can start using the pencil as a stylus, 
And interestingly, on Photoshop at least, it even keeps the pressure sensitivity function, which is really cool. There's even an option in the settings to keep the double tap feature of the pencil live, although I haven't found any apps that support that yet. I touched on both of these in my iPad tips and tricks video, which I'll link in the description below, but it would feel wrong not to mention them here. The first up is using the pencil to take much better screenshots. Rather than pressing various button combinations to take a screenshot like we all do, you can use the Apple Pencil to swipe up diagonally from the bottom left of the iPad to take a screenshot. You can then immediately mark this up if you need to. At the top of this screen, you also have access to a full screen screenshot option, which allows you to save an entire page, which can then be sent or saved as a PDF. Another tip in a similar area is QuickNote. If you swipe up from the bottom right hand side of the screen, this delivers a small notes window, which allows you to take some quick notes if you're deep into another app. You can also drag in links, text or pictures too. And there's a button at the top to add the web page to the note so you can get right back to it if you need to. These then save into your notes app like normal. And I can't not mention Instant Note either. If you tap the iPad screen with your Apple Pencil while it's off, it will launch directly into a note and you can begin writing without unlocking the iPad. This will then save directly to your notes app and you can check or edit it later on. It's super useful if you're in a pinch and really need to write something down quickly. Keeping track of the Apple Pencil's battery life isn't always obvious, so this tip focuses on that. If you've got a second generation pencil, you can snap it to the side and see very quickly how much is in there, but you've got less options if you're on the first generation. Luckily, the battery widget can show you in real time how much you've got left and it's really easy to get onto your home screen. Simply head into the widget screen and find the battery widget, then add the one you like the look of and you're all good for keeping tabs on your pencil's battery life. I'm personally not huge on how this widget looks, so I hide it off the screen to the left. Also a note, Apple claims 10 seconds of charging should get you around 30 minutes of use, and if you can leave it going for two minutes, you should get a massive two hours of use out of your pencil. In my usage, it's certainly a little less than that. However, if it has run down to nothing, it really doesn't take too long to jump back in. Okay, let's look at one last tip before we round up this video. This one is about adding a drawing to an email. To do this, open up the mail app and start writing an email. Then with the pencil in hand, you should be able to see a small pencil icon at the bottom right of the screen. Tapping this will launch you into a blank canvas to draw on. And once you finish what you want to draw, you can insert this into an email and really quickly fire it off. So that pretty much rounds up all the tips and tricks I use for the Apple Pencil. If you've got one you want to add to this video that I didn't mention, then pop it in the comments below. I always love to read different uses from different people. Anyway, that rounds up this video. If you did enjoy it, pop a like on the way out. That would be massive, and I will see you all in the next one.